so finally we reached our final step step 11 uh, to conclude our hydraulic calculation procedure here uh, in this final step we are going to conclude the project requirement for flow and pressure so right now uh, you know we will discuss about the primary part data since we already you know discussed and calculated the attachment data in our previous steps now we move forward with the primary path data so in primary path data we already know the primary path in from our previous uh, uh, video series or previous steps from step 1 to step 10 if you listen to my class you will be able to understand so now primary in primary path we have uh, node 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to rn1 rn1 to cm1 cm1 to again cm2 cm2 to cm3 cm3 to base of the riser so this one we are going to enter the data in this hydraulic calculation form so here we have node 1 to node 2 node 2 to 3 3 to rn1 rn1 to cm1 cm1 to cm2 since we already discussed uh, about uh, these datas how to enter and everything so i am going to thoroughly go through in this particular step so here we have the elevation 19 feet for the node 1 and for node 2 as well it is 19 feet only okay this is a print mistake okay so now here the k factor at node 1 is 5.6 and q will be 18.9 by using area into density formula as you can see in a uh, nodes on your uh, right hand side of your screen by using this formula we are calculating the q here we are considering 1 inch pipe so length between node 1 and 2 is 14 feet since there are no fittings we are considering if there are fittings we need to consider the equivalent length of the uh, you know pipe or equivalent length of the fitting you just need to mention the feet here and then if you want to understand about this particular concept you can just watch my video on has and williams friction loss calculation so this is available on my youtube channel as well okay so here uh, total will be 14 plus 0 it will be 14 feet length so friction loss will be 0.117 by using has and williams formula so if you multiply this uh, friction loss per foot with total length 14 then we will get this pf total friction loss elevation will be zero since node 1 and 2 are on the same height and pt is total pressure which we can calculate by using this particular formula so here this q 18.9 since uh, uh, this is the first sprinkler so the flow whatever is available here we consider here as well so in node 2 and 3 the elevation is same k factor at node 2 is similar to k factor at node 1 which is 5.6 and here 20.2 we get by using this formula here q is equal to k root p we consider k will be 5.6 sprinkler k factor and p will be now here if you see p will be pt plus pe plus pf 11.4 plus 0 plus 1.6 so 13 will be the pressure you need to uh, you know carefully listen to this particular point otherwise you will you know go somewhere else so here you got 20.2 gpm and the size actually i have shown here from 2 to 3 as 1 inch okay you can consider here as 1 inch the id will be 1.049 here and since there is no fitting we are considering we consider as 0 uh, here and now here total will be 14 plus 0 is 14 feet here we have 0.118 dimension since uh, uh, you know here it is mentioned 1 1 by 4 but actually it will be 1 inch so for 1 inch from the above you can check friction loss will be 0.117 so there is no much change anyhow here if you see pf will be 1.7 if you multiply 14 feet by 0.118 you will get 1.7 psi and elevation will be zero since uh, both node 2 and 3 are on the same uh, height pt will be 13 uh, you know psi so here this q the q at node 3 if you see 13 9.1 how we got this is we need to add this 18.9 plus 20.2 so we'll get this 39.1 okay so now this will be the total flow uh, now if you go through here node 3 to rn1 same way we have mentioned the data and we calculated small q and capital q the nominal id we mentioned there is 1t so equivalent uh, length will be 6 feet so total length will be 13 feet friction loss is 0.266 here from this we calculated the gpm 21.5 gpm 
so everything we mentioned like this so similarly we need to calculate till cm2 so here at cm1 to cm2 since both are on the same elevation and the pipe size here is 3 inch and the id will be 3.068 c factor is 120 since it is also same black steel pipe and the total length will be 9 feet here pt will be if you need to add 18.2 plus 1.3 plus 2.5 you will get 22 feet now equivalent k factor at cm1 i am not going to draw the isometric here since i already drawn several times in our previous steps so that you will uh, understand so i am going thoroughly uh, in this particular uh, step so here you have the formula q divided by root pt here pt will be 22 and uh, q will be here if you see it will be about 83.1 so you will get 17.72 so now from cm2 we need to take the root to cm3 from cm3 to the bottom of the riser so cm2 same elevation cm3 is also same elevation here the k factor at cm2 is 17.72 since the k factor at uh, cm1 and k factor at cm2 both are same as these two branch lines are typical so 1 2 3 to rn1 and 5 6 7 rn2 both are typical so the k factor at cm1 and cm2 both are same so we consider the k factor at uh, cm2 as same as cm1 so now the q is 83.1 okay we already got that one before for cm1 so we are considering the same thing here and the nominal id will be 3 inch length will be 9 feet total will be total length will be 9 feet so here a friction loss uh, by using friction loss formula we got 0 0.035 pt will be 22.1 and uh, or 22.1 yes you are right since uh, from cm1 to cm2 friction loss uh, we mentioned as 0 0.1 since uh, 9 multiplied by 0 0.01 uh, we are getting 0 0.1 so it will be 22.1 and here friction loss will be 9 multiplied by 0 0.035 it will be 0 0.3 so uh, here uh, we have mentioned like in nodes flow to second attachment path q is equal to k multiply by root p which is k already known 17.72 multiply by root p p will be this one 22.1 so we got 83.3 gpm once again so this 83.3 gpm we already mentioned here so now cm3 is at 16 feet and bottom of the riser is at 1 feet so now here the k factor is 10.07 we consider and uh, oh shit. So the k factor at uh, cm3 is 10.07 you need to watch my uh, earlier uh, procedure steps to know about this here we got uh, q as 47.7 if you see on your right hand side we mentioned the formula as well so the nominal dia will be 3 inch actual dia will be 3.068 here uh, the length will be 62 feet since we are considering from cm3 to bor so it will be bottom of the riser is 62 feet and the fittings uh, since we have one elbow one gate wall and one check wall in the riser we are considering 24 feet so the total will be 86 feet so the friction losses from uh, this pipe 3 inch will be 0 0.056 so if you multiply 86 by 0 0.056 we will get 4.8 and elevation since uh, there is change in elevation the elevation uh, psi will be 6.5 since for one feet elevation 0 0.433 psi we consider so here there is difference of 15 feet so for 15 feet we are getting 6.5 psi and pt will be 22.4 if you add the above uh, pressures 22.1 plus 0 plus 0 0.3 we will get 22.4 so you know once uh, we get all this data so we reached uh, till bottom of the riser now we can check the flow to 14.1 gpm uh, we are getting since uh, you know already we have 166.4 gpm at cm3 
so 166.4 plus 47.7 we will get 214.1 gpm so this is the required flow for the project excluding host stream allowance okay i will let you know uh, in few minutes about the host stream allowance and here you are getting the required pressure as 33.7 if you add 22.4 plus 6.5 plus 4.8 you will get 33.7 so basically i will just erase here and i will show you the most important part of this hydraulic calculation uh, procedure so here basically we got 214.1 gpm flow and are at 33.7 7 psi but we need to add host stream allowance for ordinary hazard applications the host stream allowance is 250 gpm for light hazard it will be 100 gpm and for uh, extra hazard we consider as 500 gpm so now 214.1 gpm plus 250 gpm we get 464.1 gpm at 33.7 this is the actual project requirement now uh, i will just uh, scroll down if we have any space here otherwise uh, we, what we can do just a minute i'll just uh, erase this portion you can uh, note down all those things so just a minute we need to draw one graph if you want to know about the hydraulic graph you can check my video series on water supplies acceptable by nfpa 13 hydrant flow test procedure with graphic analysis which is already available on my youtube channel you can see on uh, right hand on your screen uh, the screenshot i already mentioned in this particular video so now coming back to our uh, point now what we need to do in step 1 we already said that there is an available pressure at the base of the reservoir or at the tie in point so static pressure we already know 70 2 psi at uh, 0 gpm flow and uh, residual pressure is 58 psi at 1200 gpm this was already provided by the client for this particular project now based on these two things and our requirement of about 464.1 gpm at 33.7 psi we shall draw the hydraulic graph so here just i will show you if you want to know more about the hydraulic graph you can refer to my the video series on hydrant flow test procedure okay so now on x axis we have flow on right right axis we will mention the pressure here for example you have uh, 72 psi and uh, the residue here flow is in gpm and pressure is in psi so here for example we have uh, 1200 gpm and uh, this is like 58 psi so 58 psi at 1200 gpm so we'll just draw one straight line this is one point and this is another point now our requirement will mention this is zero on x axis so we or our requirement is 464 gpm but the sprinkler requirement is 214 gpm so we will draw one straight line 214 gpm at 33.7 psi so for example here we have uh, 214 gpm so we will take the line till here now we will take straight line parallel to the x axis for the hose allowance this is the most important part to draw the graph so hose allowance is we will add 250 gpm so it will be 464.1 gpm as i already told if you want to uh, get more details on this particular hydraulic graph you have to check my video which i mentioned on right hand side so basically we concluded the calculations so now finally few words i just like to uh, tell you that the required flow for this project is 464.1 gpm at 33.7 psi so maybe we can consider a fire pump capacity of 500 gpm at 33.7 psi I hope you have learned more than a typical engineer and designer in the fire protection industry. So it is the time to see if all our work is paid off. So if you like my videos or if you have any comments
please let me know but if you like my videos and want to learn more and more on firefighting and fire alarm systems i request you to subscribe to my youtube channel irfan cfps so that you will get much knowledge and i will share my experience with you as i am having a total 11 years of uh, experience in the fire protection industry especially in the design part i hope uh, you enjoyed my video series thank you thank you once again bye